Hi, Yolanda. Hi, Claire. Thank you so much for agreeing to do the interview and teaching us about blockchain. I know we're all extremely interested to learn more. Well, that's good to hear. So getting started, do you want to just give us a bit of background about you and your history with blockchain and what you're currently working on? Well, yes, I started working as a computer coder uh, in the late 80s when software was still a new thing for many people. Mm -hmm. I always liked pioneering and exploring new things. And what I really liked most about that was helping other people understand what this innovation meant and how it could impact their work and their lives. Mm -hmm. And as I was always looking into new things, I found my passion, my new passion in education. So I worked for a teacher, uh, as a teacher for six years. Um, and then I, after that, I decided to focus on the business side of things and how business models worked. And that led me to work for the government in the IT sector again. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, and, and my focus has always been on connecting technical people with non-technical people, <laughs> non-technical people, which is a challenge. <laughs> Um, and seeing the technology not as a final goal, but as a means to reach another goal. Yeah. And that is what I always try to make clear for both parties. Well, and then uh, blockchain came on my path, and it was the perfect way to combine all of my areas of expertise together. The education part, the technology, and business. And um, it's actually a funny story how I learned about blockchain. Um, because as always, I was exploring new things again, and I went to this conference. It was a huge building in Amsterdam, and there were so many different rooms with different workshops. And before the conference, I had made a plan of all the workshops I wanted to attend, but I got lost in the building. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and I ended up in a random workshop room. <laughs> and then the door closed, the lights went off, and the workshop started. And the word blockchain appeared on the screen. <laughs> and I had never heard of it. And I had no idea what it was about. So the presenter started talking about it. And everybody seemed to know what he was talking about except me. <laughs> and so he started saying new technology and notes. And notes are connected computers. So okay. I said, oh, okay, at least this I understand it. This is IT. I understand it. <laughs> but then suddenly, for me, out of the blue... He said that banks may become redundant and I had no idea where that came from and what he was talking about. Yeah. So at the end of the workshop I left and I intended to forget about this strange new thing. But of course as it goes when you hear something new suddenly you read about it everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah that's how it goes. <laughs> um, so I got fascinated and I set out to learn everything I could about blockchain. And in the process, I have met so many interesting people that were willing to share their knowledge with me. Just in exchange for a cup of coffee at, Star at Starbucks, for example, they would tell me everything they knew about blockchain. <laughs> that was really wow. great. Oh, how cool. And, yeah, and then because of my combined background with IT and business processes, I was asked by the Dutch Blockchain Coalition to represent the Netherlands at, uh, at ISO. Do you know the ISO? Wow, yes. Oh, that's yes. incredible. Uh, yeah, they do standardization. So they're working also on standardization for blockchain technology. So I did that for a while, for over a year. And I also work as a consultant for the European Commission. Okay. They have a working group, which is called the Blockchain Observatory and Forum. And we research themes that are of interest to the general audience. And then we write non-technical reports about it. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, we did this, for example, on blockchain and the GDPR, which was very hot last year, of course. Yeah. We also made a report on blockchain and digital identity and, you know, other interesting subjects. And all these reports are publicly available from the website, from the Blockchain oh, Observatory. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's nice. Blockchain and, Observatory, I will make sure that it's that interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, of course, as a trainer, I develop and I conduct face-to-face -face trainings for a broad audience. Mm -hmm. And lately, especially for lawyers, it's a very interesting uh, target audience. Um, and now, of course, I've developed also my online training for, for yeah. Michael Manning. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. all rounds of training. Oh. Yeah. And then on occasion, I also speak at conferences. Um, I always try to emphasize not the technical part, but mostly what does this technology mean for the way we transact for our business, for our society? 
So I try to connect the technical parts to the non-technical parts so everybody can understand it. So that's, that's my background. Oh, that's amazing. I still can't get over the fact that you just happened to stumble into the blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just catapulted the rest of your career. I love it. It obviously was serendipitous. You were yeah. to be in there for some reason. Oh, that's so cool. Well, you are definitely the person we need to be talking to. I mean, that's, I can't <laughs> wait to, to dive in more. And I love to even bring up blockchain observatory for people such as myself who are interested, but don't know much to go and read and, um, yeah, thank you, thank you. So even that was fascinating. Okay, I will provide you with the link from the observatory. You can okay. check. Yeah. Okay, great. So as I'm, I'm sure you're extremely well aware of, you know, it's even for people who are not in super technical, are talking about blockchain. There's just buzz going around everywhere. Um, our director even told us that on Jeopardy, one of the questions was, "What is blockchain?" So it's definitely being brought to the forefront. So will you just give us kind of an, an overview? I know that's a tough question because there's so much involved, but what's all the buzz about what is blockchain? Yeah, well, blockchain is, is a technology and many people confuse it with Bitcoin, which is an implementation of that technology. So blockchain is a technology that enables peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So you don't need an intermediary or a central authority anymore as a trusted third party. Mm. So once I understood that, I understood the remark from the presenter at the conference when he said that banks may become redundant. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it's a little bit an overstatement because there are, of course, still things that you need banks for. But certain, um, certain parts of the banks may become redundant because we don't need a trusted third party anymore to transact. Mm. For example, the best known example is Bitcoin, like I said, uh, where you can transact value worldwide without a bank or without other intermediary. But I think it's very important to know that blockchain goes way beyond Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And uh, blockchain has four very interesting characteristics that sets it apart from a normal database or from normal connected systems. Um, the first one is that it's like a distributed ledger that is synchronized across the networks. And that can be different uh, business networks or it can be a public network like the Bitcoin network. Okay. Um, and you can even have a combination of both. You can have a, a hybrid blockchain, which is part uh, business network, but also with a part public network. So consumers can um, log into the network in a special part, which is connected to a business network. Um, one example here in the Netherlands is, for example, one of um, a very uh, large chain of grocery stores. They have made orange juice and with a QR code on the, on the package from the orange juice, you can scan it with a blockchain app on your uh -huh. cell phone. Uh -huh. And then you can see the origins and uh, the, the provenance of the oranges. Oh you can see when they were picked, when they were transported, under which circumstances they were transported. Uh, you can follow all the information. Ah, so that's, that's, yeah, that's a very interesting uh, use case of blockchain. And the, that brings me to the second part or the second characteristic of blockchain, which is that the trust in blockchain is guaranteed by the necessity to have consensus on the validity of the transactions. And transactions are not only financial transactions, but a transaction can also be, for example, when an orange is picked, which is one transaction on the blockchain and when the orange goes on the ship or on the truck or whatever. Those are transactions too. And um, for example, in the Bitcoin blockchain, cryptography is used as a consensus mechanism, which makes it very secure. Mm, okay. So nobody can tamper with the information that is on the blockchain. Once it's on the blockchain, and that's the third part, the third characteristic, once it's on the blockchain, it's on the blockchain forever. So the immutability of the data is, is very important. Um, so once a transaction has been stored on the blockchain and consensus is achieved, then it's secured cryptographically, which makes it really impossible to tamper with. Wow, okay. And of course, if, uh, if something went wrong and some uh, wrong data was entered, a correction is possible, but it can only be done with a new transaction. 
just like in regular accountancy, for example, you don't change the books from the past, you make a new transaction to correct the one that was wrong. So blockchain has a very transparent, transparent audit trail. And then um, the really important part uh, of the blockchain is called smart contracts. And smart contracts are like computer code on the blockchain. And this is specifically why I have so many uh, law firms as clients, because um, what they do, it, they're small computer programs and they can automatically enforce themselves once certain conditions are met. So you can automate, for example, business processes using smart contracts. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly where the lawyers come in because they have to see how this works legally, if it's all within the legal boundaries. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. And this, yeah, and this is also immediately um, an obstacle because blockchain, of course, doesn't stop at the borders of a country. So mm. you have to do it with different jurisdictions and different laws from different countries. So that's something that, uh, of course, they're still working on. Mm -hmm. But it's already working in many places. So those, those are basically, in a nutshell, that's what blockchain is about. Wow. That's such new territory as well. It'll be interesting to see and make sense that you're working with so many lawyers. Yes, absolutely. Um, uncharted waters. Oh, very cool. Well, I love the orange juice example too, because I've, I have to admit, I've only heard about blockchain or read about blockchain within the cryptocurrency realm. So I like having that kind of tangible day-to-day -day example. And I think a yes, lot of people yes. can really- there are many examples like that. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. So then what's the relationship between blockchain and SAP for micromanagement students, for example. Yeah, what, what I see is that SAP is um, capable of integrating multiple business applications and that's based on transactions. Um, and with blockchain, you can easily integrate this with other systems and businesses, even across industries. Because in this decentralized system, the data does not need to be migrated or, or um, exported from one system to another because it's just one decentralized system which makes it less sensitive to fraud and error yeah okay. you see that besides the financial industry the supply chain is a very important industry that can benefit from blockchain because if because of its transparency and immutability and it has a very good audit trail and a very good example of this is how SAP has launched at the beginning of this year a supply chain tracking service which is based on blockchain and what it does is that it enables drug wholesalers to authenticate the pharmaceutical packaging which is returned from hospitals and pharmacies and blockchain here provides a secure and near real-time data which is decentralized so there is not one central party but there is consensus in the business network on the validity of the data so when these packages come back uh, from hospitals, for example, nobody can tamper with the dates on it, the expiry, the expiry dates or ingredients or whatever, because everything can be traced in the blockchain, which can be using blockchain as well. Oh, interesting. And that makes so much sense specifically for supply chain. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The provenance is one of the most important things in the blockchain, the provenance and the audit trail. That's where it's used a lot. Wow, very, very cool. And so I know this is a big question as well, but what does the future hold for blockchain? Or what do you see sort of the next few years and then onwards? Yeah, that's a very big question. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I have my own vision on that, which is a vision, of course, because I strongly believe that blockchain can create, can create great value for people and it can really change the way that we are doing business as we know it. Because this idea of trustless transaction where the third parties are not necessary anymore and allowing one to transact with anyone anywhere in the world in a transparent and secure manner, I think that's really disruptive. That's what makes blockchain disruptive, not the fact of cryptocurrency or, but the fact that you have a a system that you can trust the transactions without knowing who you're dealing with, without trusting the person that you're dealing with. And I believe that combining blockchain with other technological innovations, 
like artificial intelligence and sensors, Internet of Things, it could provide automation of administrative processes. And it, it will allow us to pay more attention to the human side of things. And that's very important to me too. Because as humans, yeah, as humans, we will have more time to do really custom-made work for our customers instead of always being busy with administrative processes, which can be easily overtaken by the technology. So I believe that the human work will get more value because mm. we can really help each other where it matters instead of trying to help each other getting through the bureaucracy of the yeah. administrative processes the way we are now. <laughs> and during my training and my workshops, I always start with the part about innovations and I don't immediately dive into the blockchain technology because I think that first people need to have the mindset about the innovations and to see the place of blockchain in these innovations. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what's really funny? Um, last week I had a very special training. Um, I did a training at elementary school of my daughter. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, and she's 11 years old. And I spent one hour and a half training these kids, telling them what blockchain is, explaining it, using also the example of the oranges. And it's so amazing, but they really understood it. I could see it from the questions they were asking me. And what I really like about that audience <laughs> is that they have such an open mind. Mm -hmm. You know, they, when I say something innovative or disruptive, they don't say, ah, no, that will never work. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I've always done it like this, you know? <laughs> so it's very nice because... When I showed them a short uh, film about the history of transactions and how money came to be, how we used to exchange shells and salt and whatever. And then at the end, I asked them the question, okay, so Bitcoin could be, or cryptocurrency could be the future of money, but what other possibilities do you see? And you know, one of the kids said, well, maybe we could have holographic money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was so out of the box, so wonderful. So I really enjoyed that training it was really great it was really a wonderful experience oh i love that yeah and they're a clean slate as well because like you said yeah. they're not tainted by you know, knowing what what used to be I, I have to say your daughter's so lucky all those children at elementary school are going to be so ahead of the rest of the world that's so cool yeah let me give you an example that i used to start about blockchain for people that maybe still don't really get the idea of what blockchain is. I told my daughter, imagine you're at school, you made a test at school and you had a very good grade. You had a, a B, for example, B grade, very good. But then one day, and the, the teacher writes the B down in her little notebook. But then another day, you're really rude to the teacher. You really behave badly. And the teacher said, you know what I do? I will change the grade. And my daughter was really <laughs> upset. <laughs> Don't do that. It's not fair. <laughs> I said, but she's in charge. She's the central authority in the classroom. So she can change it if she wants to. I said, how would you solve this situation? She said, well, what I would do, I would keep my own notebook and I would write down all my notes. I said, but who do you think they're going to believe? The central authority or you as a student, as a consumer, whatever? I said, do you know how blockchain solves this problem? The entire classroom gets the same notebook and doesn't write down only their own notes, but they write down the notes from everybody in the class, which is the decentralized system. Um, so like this, you don't have one ledger, but you have a decentralized ledger. And that's, that, that's what blockchain is. It's a decentralized ledger. Everybody has the same copy of the notebook with all the notes in it. And of course, um, privacy can be also uh, a thing there. So it's possible to make uh, appropriate visibility so not everybody can see everything. Uh. And, and that's how, how blockchain works. You have no central authority anymore. There is not one person in the network like the teacher more important than the others. And if one person changes one of the nodes, everybody else in the network can say, hey, but we have another <laughs> node here. So it's not correct. And that's the consensus in the blockchain. The majority decides. Oh, that's such a perfect example, Yolanda. And as you said in your background, that you're bringing technology to those who are, are not necessarily technologically savvy. I think you did such a beautiful job right there of breaking it down in very simple terms. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, I also think that, of course, there's still much to improve for blockchain, you know, and the future is still unknown. Um, but I strongly believe in the concept of blockchain, and I really think it's here to stay because we need this trust. Yeah. We can never have trust in each other all over the world because, you know, that's just impossible. Mm -hmm. so blockchain is a good way to use the technology to have trust, at least in the transactions that we do with each other. So also if blockchain uh, will not be around anymore in a few years, once you know that it's possible to transact without central authority, you cannot unknow it. You know, there, there will be another way then to do it. So I think the concept of blockchain is really here to stay. You say true. Yeah, it's changed the way that we view. It sounds like it's, it's much more transparent as well and just trustworthy, as you said. Yes, absolutely. Wow. wow. So it, as a student or as a person you know, that's interested but doesn't know, know too much about blockchain, how would you recommend getting started or getting involved to kind of teach oneself about blockchain in the future of the whole process? Well, to get a fundamental understanding of blockchain technology, of course, you can enroll in my course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. Or you can with me for a face-to-face -face training, which is possible too. Um, I think following a course will save you a lot of time. Um, there is really absolutely a lot of information on the internet about blockchain. You can find everything. Um, but the question is, is it correct and is it understandable for you? Yeah. Um, so what I do with my course is that um, all the important basic information is brought together there, including the real life case studies. So it's all there. It's just one go to place for, for blockchain. You know, I have met, I have read many books on blockchain, but I have discovered that most of them are very technical. So that's why I decided to write uh, something easy to understand. Um, and I really believe that the understanding of technological innovation is vital for its adoption. Mm -hmm. So my mission is really to make blockchain knowledge accessible for a broad audience at every level. Oh, you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll make sure within um, anyone who's listening, I will link your course absolutely and uh, we'll make sure that that is available and accessible for people to take a look at and to purchase. Um, because I'll say from personal experience as well, and I've been reading about blockchain in the past six months, uh, and I experienced a lot of information overload, as you've said, and I don't know who to trust necessarily, or it's not broken down in terms, so it's just this, this big sort of idea that I, I can't compartmentalize. So I think your course does a very fantastic job of bringing that and, and just kind of handing it to you, making it accessible. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Recommend it. Oh, of course. And do you have uh, any other courses in the works or are you planning yeah. on creating yes. one? Yes. Um, the course that is online now is the fundamental course mm -hmm. and I'm working on other courses, for example, about the smart contracts that I was talking about. Oh yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and um, there are still some other subjects. I will, I will work on more courses because I see that uh, uh, people really want to learn about blockchain. Mm -hmm. I think there is a need for blockchain courses. Agreed. Well, we're lucky to have you. We're lucky to have met you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much for all that info. And as I said, again, everything will be linked to your course, um, anyone who's listening to this. So... Thank you, thank you. It's incredibly interesting, very forward thinking, and I'm so happy you stumbled into that meeting <laughs> accidentally at that conference. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was my pleasure talking to you. Bye. Bye.